So I'm currently working on a full car audio build where I'm adding multiple amplifiers, two subwoofers, and several speakers. In the last video, I started framing out the trunk with a cover for the spare tire and making these side covers. In this video, let's continue our build process with making these custom trim panel shapes. Now really quick, before we get into making those shapes, I do wanna thank our monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. For this project, I'm using an audio control speaker and subwoofer amplifier, but audio control makes more than just amplifiers. They also make high-end line drivers, bass processors, equalizers, crossovers, and digital signal processors. Everything that is needed for a high-end car audio system, they have a ton of solutions for different applications to make good sound great. To learn more about their full lineup of car audio gear, check out the links down in the video description. The shape that I've decided to go with here is the Falcon template from Mobile Solutions. I think that this is going to be a good template because first of all, it really makes the amplifiers look perfect. It fits that size nicely. And I feel like these curves and arcs do a good job at matching the vehicle's interior. As of right now, what I'm thinking is I'll obviously expand upon this outside shape so that it fills out a little bit more and obviously blocks off this lower area here. This piece will probably also sit up here and I'm thinking about doing molded metal mesh. I've got this metal mesh piece right here. That way you can kind of still see the amplifiers, but for the most part, they are blocked off and protected. You guys already know what I'm using because you've seen the finished thumbnail, but we're gonna work through this and find out. The first step here is I'm gonna cut a rectangular board that goes from here to here and is the same height, and I'm gonna start sketching my layout. I've spent some time here using the templates to sketch out my plan, and here's kind of what I'm thinking. First of all, I know I can sketch on this board because this is gonna be my base board that's gonna actually attach in the vehicle and all these different shapes are going to attach to it. Now I don't wanna have this boring vertical line on each side, so the first thing I did is I kinda of drew out an arc here that I'm going to use for cutting right there, and then it's gonna cut in here. And I made sure that with these arcs, my mounting points for those panels that are already in the car are hidden behind this. As far as the hole where you can view the amplifiers through, that's going to be in the center here. And then we're gonna have a shape that will probably be wrapped in vinyl right outside of that with the metal mesh on the inside. We're gonna to transition to a different color vinyl. That way we have two different vinyl materials and a third material. Again, the rule of three usually applies. We're then going to have another shape here, which is going to be a different color vinyl just to give us some contrast. So we're gonna have that mesh, the two different colors of vinyl, and then we're gonna to transition to carpet. I want to add a little bit more design to the carpet piece here. So I think I'm gonna add an extra piece here that's probably just a quarter inch thick and is permanently attached to this. And the carpet will just wrap over that part as well to transition and add just a little bit more dimension. I measured out that standoff that's bolted to the top of the box and drew the lines on the edges here. That way I knew where I could approximately have some through holes on this overall panel in order to bolt this full assembly to the box. With all of these different transitions, of different materials from vinyl to vinyl to carpet, it's very, very important that we get these gaps perfectly sized. And again, I just wanna reiterate that I'll be using this tool. Proper gapping is what really, really sets apart these builds. So I'm not gonna go full into detail on the gapping process because it is a little bit more advanced and it would take too much time in this video. But again, definitely check out that video if you guys wanna learn more about exactly how to do this. So for now, I'm gonna move on to making these cuts first and then cutting the rest of the shapes. Time for a build montage. Yeah. <laughs> 
So now we have all of our shapes cut and it might not look like much yet, but that's because we need to next start adding some edge profiles. This piece in the middle here, I made this out of three quarter inch thick material. That way we can add a little bit more dimension and I can slope each of these edges down to meet the half inch size with a chamfer bit. I can also use the chamfer bit to combine this part here into the main board as well as this part into the main board and to add some dimension on the inside here. Finally, much like that base shape that we made in the bottom of the trunk earlier, I'm going to do a really light round over around the outside. Let's hop onto the router and add Add our edge profiles. I've got that round over around the outside like we talked about. I did chamfers on this piece and this piece. I also did chamfers on this piece here and this piece here. I did do a little bit of additional detail here by using a bull nose bit with a line that just goes across. So two lines there just to add a little bit of detail. And on the back side of each of these pieces, I prepped them for upholstery materials by adding a rabbit groove around the edges that I need to. So on this inside piece, it's on the inside edge because we're gonna wrap the vinyl around that inside edge and tuck it in. And then there's a transition gap from vinyl to vinyl that that will be hidden so we can just cut it flush on the outside. But for this piece here, since this will press fit in, it has a rabbit on both sides, inside and outside for that vinyl to wrap around. If we look on the back side of the piece, it's hard to see right here, but I also made a rabbit groove on the back side for all of the carpet that will be wrapped as well. Now you guys might've also noticed if I remove that center piece, that I also did a rabbited groove around this inside cut hole on the baseboard. The reason for that is I wanted to give myself a little pocket for the metal sheet to sit inside to that we're gonna do the molded metal mesh. So making the molded mesh is what I'm gonna do next. And to do that, I've made this mold box here. As you can see, pretty simple construction with a bottom and a top, and then attached to the bottom and the top are a positive and negative shape. To stick the positive and negative shapes to the top and bottom, I use template tape, carefully align it, and then push everything together as a big sandwich, and then I can open up the assembly, and you can see now the top is in a position that it's perfectly aligned with the bottom once we go to sandwich this board. I've got the metal mesh here cut to size so I can put it inside the mold box. I'll use a slight small amount of template tape to hold it in the position that I want it, and then we're gonna take it over to my press. So now that we're here at my 12 ton shop press, I can just go back and forth and close up the press multiple times, sandwiching that metal mesh. So now we can do the big reveal. Nice. Nice and formed here, looking good. I'm gonna get this cut out and then we'll position it inside of our piece. You can see a slight change in hue and that's on the metal itself. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to paint this off camera before we attach everything. I'll just paint it a silver color that is similar to the outside of the car. Now, another quick side note, all of the woodworking that you guys have seen so far, I know that it can come across as really easy in the video and very fast, but I do wanna be clear here that if I wasn't spending time recording and turning the camera on and off, this is about six hours worth of labor right here. So just a quick heads up for you guys, if you're gonna have somebody do this kind of custom labor for you, understand that it definitely takes quite a bit of time. So I'm at a point now that I've prepped everything with all the edge profiling, so we can basically move into upholstery. The last thing I need to do is take pieces like this that are going to be a completed part like this piece this piece and this piece they're all going to be one piece all wrapped in carpet I'm going to use some CA glue and attach all of these together this is going to look so good I'm excited about this one. So here it is my friends, all the woodworking is complete and you can't see it, but I have four bolt locations behind this panel, one here, two up top, and then another one on the side. So this whole assembly is nice and rigid mounted. And then these pieces here will be attached from the back side. And this piece is the only piece that really needs to come out to give us access to those mounting holes. So this will be press fit in between the different pieces of material. And because we gapped perfectly for our different upholstery materials, 
materials, it's going to fit nice and tight and be perfect. So speaking of upholstery, that is the next step. I'm gonna get all of this upholstered in the carpet and the vinyl using that spray adhesive on both pieces of material and sticking the two together. So in the next video, it's gonna be the grand reveal. To catch that next video of doing the upholstery and finalizing the trunk layout, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Remember that next time you're planning a car audio install, you wanna take control of your audio with show sponsor Audio Control. You can learn more about them at the links down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Bryson, Mike, Ali, Jared, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching.